Okay, how we doing out there? Got this guy to operate today, my robot. Uh, first things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Supreme Ambient Light Rejection Screen Paint. Using Ambient Light Rejection Technology Gain, we're going to paint two screens in today. Just turning my lights on in the house. We're going to paint two screens in today. We're going to paint, looks like it was already gone, okay, cool. So, we're going to paint uh, the gaming screen in here in the gaming room, and we're going to paint the kitchen screen today. I got my frog tape, as you can see right there. Unfortunately, I don't have enough to do this screen, so I got to order some more frog tape. It takes two of those, actually two and about a half, to paint that one. So we're going to do this one over here, and one downstairs. So let me get my my tripod here, and I'm going to start on the one downstairs. We're going to do the kitchen screen first, and then we're going to do the gaming room screen. Turn this on, I'll have to play it in the background. My birds, because bird is the word. I love that. I don't know where this demonstration came from, but I'm going to use that one. There's my other screen in there. So, this is what we're going to be painting today. One of the screens already wrapped in with my uh, frog tape. All I'm going to do is coat this. Probably might take two coats because it has a shiny coat into it. But we'll see. All right. So let me grab something here. I can set up. So let me do this one real fast. I'm not doing these really quick. We're in two small screens. So this should be easy to do. Easy and fast. Let me make sure I got something behind here to crop this a little better. Keep it from moving and going any place. All right, there we go. So we're going to do this one, and we're going to do the gaming screen upstairs. Let me grab something here so we can get this light this candle. I need to get something for the gaming screen upstairs so I can use that as a palette to paint on. Paint up there because it's not even any against the wall, it's the wall. So I get a chance to see drywall being done. So I'll be back. And I figure it's going to take them 90 days to return my money. I might just keep their freaking screen and turn it into a rear projection screen. I'm thinking about it now. I got a welding kit downstairs. Keep in mind when you do a rear projection, you can't have a bar in the middle of your screen. So to make sure that support beam stays, because it's two, two screens locked together, or two, um, two borders locked together. So to make sure it stays, I'm going to have to weld that. So it stays and turn that into a. Um, a uh, rear projection screen. Pretty easy to do. They make these uh, screens that you can get off Amazon. They're white, they're transparent, and they're very stretchy. And you can stretch that around a screen. So if I get 120 inch, I can wrap that neatly around 135 inch, and I'll just use bungees connected to the grommets to the back to string it up. Much like a woman wears a corset. Same thing. So I'm thinking like if it's going to take 90 days, 50 to 90 days for me to get 250, I can make that money in no time. I can make that money in my sleep. So ain't no point in me waiting. I might just keep the screen. About 135 upstairs already ready to go. And they're going to drag their feet on it anyway. Let me see. What we got here in this container. And yeah, we got enough in here. Knock out both of them. Stir this up a bit. Here's my, uh, 
things to buy. Use pencils and spoons because I just went through them. All right. Cool. All right. So let's pour some of this on. Upstairs. Knock that one out. Yeah, this has got a bit of a slick coat to it. So this one takes two. Coat to knock it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nice top coating on the first. This is going to allow for it to leave some kind of foundation to apply the second. The second will go on the smoothest glass. Anytime you're painting a surface that has a bit of a real shiny coat to it, like a slick surface, don't worry about seeing any of the screen pull through. Don't do that. Just let it dry. Let it dry just like that, right? You'll see some of the screen poking through because that's the whatever coating that's on that material will cause some of the paint to separate when it hits the surface. Don't worry about that. You're leaving a light coating on it. A light coating leaves a foundation for you to put that second coat, and that second coat seals the deal. I learned that when I was painting um, motorized projection screens, and some of those screens would have like a kind of a, a slick coating to that EVC. And what I would do is I would basically just spray a light coating over top of it to lay a foundation. And then once that foundation dry, I'll go right over top of it and disappear. Alright, so let me grab my fan. So we can just dry up my rough series working on the other one. Make sure I got all my ends covered here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of that frog tape, I'll be right back. I'm gonna make sure all those side corners are covered. We don't want anything flipping over on the screen. I haven't been in my freaking PS4 for like freaking four days. So what we're gonna do is tape our ends like this. If you don't see, I'm gonna show you. We tape our ends so that way when we turn the fan on, you don't gotta worry about the material flipping into the screen. Mess your screen up. All right. So we're just tape down our ends. That's why I tell people, look, when you're painting the screen and it's got that protective coating on it, like that, don't try to paint the screen to get the code to get the, get that to disappear. Don't don't do that because you'll waste a ton of paint. Put that first coating on it, let that foundation lay, let it dry. When you put the second, it disappears. It happens when you're dealing with a surface that has a real shiny coating to it. Usually, fixed frame screens have that kind of coating to it. So all you want to do is just lay a foundation. Okay, let's get this dry. Plug this in, no one did not. Alright. And add some power to that so it'll work. Right. I'll drop this so I can get to the outlet. Okay, any outlet we can get to get it? Come on in. I think it's a good day. All right, so that's going to dry, leave the foundation, come in, and we're just going to come back in and knock that out. Okay, right back. 
Red dry. Attack with a wall. Now, you see how that screen separated like that when it hit it? So that one did the same exact thing. But you look at that screen, it's jet black. You gotta lay that foundation first. Once you lay that foundation, that screen is dry, jet black. That's all. So we just gonna need to roll it for this one, and that's it. Let's go pop upstairs. Let's go work on that one while this one dries. Then that'll take no time at all. We'll hit that one and we're done. I'm hanging with the lights in here. Alright. Now we're set up in here. Got a little pallet right here. the gray screen popping in here to get you set up in here finally had a neighbor come next came over Chris we're actually talking across the street I was asking where I was we went upstairs and I said I was putting in a sewing room I know I've got a weird sense of humor putting in a sewing room a disco sewing room I don't know, maybe I believe anyone, I don't know. Here we go. This goes so in the Alright. Pour some of this down. Like I said, when it comes to this technology that we all know that when it's wet, it's always dark. And bring you guys over here. Now, you know why it's impossible for this stuff to shriek? Because this paint is so thick and so heavy. I can paint this on the wall without dropping anything on that wall. I painted my ceiling with this stuff. I can put it on the roller and it stays on the roller. That's the whole purpose of making it thick. So we don't have to worry about getting any street marks in it.
That's why I double up on the tape because sometimes I may go a little bit over. I say it's crazy. Curl boys are never in when I'm doing demonstrations like this. They're never in. They never come in the room. Unless they're in the room, they're not saying anything. They never come in when I do demonstrations like this. They stay away from these demonstrations. You doing a paint on? Nah, they're, going, they're not going to stick around for this kind of demonstration. It basically proves them wrong. They don't like that. See how beautiful that contrast level is? They can't stand it when I do these demonstrations. Come in and make a mockery of my lights, but they won't come in and watch these demonstrations. Girl boys, where you at? I'm watching me do a paint on demonstration with a black screen. Um, for now, I'm going to put down Crow Boys Welcome and all my titles now, for now on. Not my titles, but you know what I mean. The bottom of the description. You're welcome. You're welcome to come in and watch. I want you to see this. I love it when the naysayers come in and watch. Now, see? If I get something on the screen, all I got to do is wipe it off. Go right back over it. That's it. Now, what was that about the screen being too dark and you can't even see it? It's not even dry yet. This screen's going to be brighter than this once it dries. So there's the RK screen done. Let's go downstairs and let's check out the other screen. Let's get that finished up. It's gonna look real nice when I set the arcade system up again. It's gonna look real nice. All right, let's go downstairs and let's go check on the other screen, which should be ready for that other coat. So let's bring you all down to eye level. Now mind you, when I'm doing this demonstration with y'all, I have my screens running in the back with all the lights on the environment while I'm doing this. I'm not painting the screen in the dark. Sorry about the camera shaking around a bit like that. I'm trying to get y'all set up, that's all. Make a little more paint. A little bit more. We should have enough on this. Down. That's it. The screen. 
or that. Very easy. Let me get a little more paint. Should I get a little more paint on this? A little bit more. There we go. That's good. Got a bit of a whistle to it. There we go, people. As I said, lay a little foundation on it. First time, hit the second time, done. Let's go upstairs. We're actually we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. That one has to take time because it's going to dry. It's laying down flat. I can't put this up against my kitchen wall because it's wet. That'd be foolish right there to do from the bedroom. Let me lay this somewhere and put that right over there. So that'd be foolish to do from the door is to put it up there knowing that it's going to basically mess up my wall. So I'm not going to do that yet. But as you know, as you can see, the way this technology is designed, I can use this in a fully lit environment. Let's see what we got going on in here. I saw that video with the birds. I like that video. Mm. There we go. Yeah, I like this video right here. Now, that's how you're supposed to be to use your screen. Fully lit environment. Without that screen, watching out or fading. That'd yeah, be dry to no time at all. And that screen upstairs will be done. I'll be setting that up, getting ready to put that whole arcade system up there. Let me wash my hands. This stuff washes off your hands very, very easily. Take y'all to the kitchen. Y'all can go with me in here to I'll have to prop this in. There we go. That's a good way to prop it up. Let me grab my old sponge. Show you how easy it is to get this stuff off your hands. That's one thing we gotta do is make it so it's easy to wash your hands off. We'll get some uh now I'm gonna use soap, no soap. You know it's interesting, something that washes off so easy, but yet it's weatherproof. You stick it outside, these screens won't crack, won't feel, nothing when the weather hits them. I'm not even using any soap, just washing it off. Same thing, if you spill anything on your floor, just go over a little warm water, gone. Just like that. Now, I don't know about clothes. For some reason, when it gets in clothes, because this stuff is designed to bleed into clothing, that's why it's designed to bleed into the surface, so. That's something uh, that you can't really get out once you get it in. So there we go. Nice and clean, somewhat nice and clean. Okay, let's clean up. Done right there. Now this is the containers for the paint that we're shipping out tomorrow. These are the last of the orders on the site right now. They're already getting ready to be processed for tomorrow. And out the door, you'll be getting those tracking numbers soon. Just want to tie up a few things around here. We'll start getting those tracking numbers out. I got to sync those tracking numbers to the same time that my friend comes down to pick them up. So I don't want to lose any money in these tracking numbers. And you don't want to sit there and get something that says new tracking number and have the other one void it. So that's why I got to sync everything just right. I'm going to go upstairs, check out that gaming room a little bit more. Because we got the fan running up there right now. Here we go. Still wet, but nice and bright. 
I told you the more, more dries, the brighter it's gonna get. It's not even fully dry yet, because I can see a few spots on it. There's a little bit dark spots on it, but it's not even dry yet. It's not even fully dry. It's gonna get much brighter than that. See, so it's designed to be used in fully lit environments. Got that screen washing and fading out. Get right down an angle. Pick up that screen. Just like you're seeing with this silver technology. Same thing. So we got one projector going this way at a distance and one going this way at a distance. Soon we're gonna have this baby done. So I gotta order some more frog tape for this, tape out the edges real good. Um, we're going to coat this one in black, jet black for the uh, Christie 505. I gotta build a bracket system, that's what all that's for. Right about there, so I can put this, set that up. That's gotta be bracketed up right there. I don't know about this projector yet. Like, should I bracket this projector? I don't know if I am or not. I might, I might just bracket it. I might just, just put it right up on top of that ledge right there. Put a nice shelf system up there and put it up there and probably lead light those windows too. So by uh, the time um, Tuesday comes, I should have the rest of the lead lights in to finish off the windows and all these corners and everything like that so we can get all that set up. Let's take our lights out for a minute. See area and areas, so you see like that, dark areas like that? That's areas where the screen is still wet. That's where the screen is still wet. As it starts to dry, it's gonna get lighter and lighter. It's still a little wet. And that's that silver technology. Okie okay, doke, people. Well, um, tomorrow I'll show off the kitchen screen. That'll be done. Um, so I gotta figure out what to do with this monstrosity. Because like I said, this is going to be here for about 90 days. This is a long time, three months. This is going to be here. If you ever did basically a return through a credit card company, it takes forever to get it. By then, like I said, I would have bought many of these screens already. So um, the only thing missing from the screen is the tension rods, which I can't use anyway now. I can't use the material it came with because it requires tension rods. But I can get a uh, stretchable uh, screen. Um, about 120 inch would stretch really nice over 135 inch perfectly and then what I'll use is I'll use a form of uh, bungee cables from the back to uh, tether uh, one, the grunt, one grommet to another. I have to just make sure those bungee cables are short enough to keep it nice and tight. Like I said, like a woman's corset, how it's designed, how it's tightened in the back. That's how I'll do it. But then again, oh, I forgot. <sighs> yeah, it's going to be rear projection. I can't have anything in the back of it. So... We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Maybe I can go over the sides of it and we'll use heavy and reinforced Velcro, Velcro around it, and maybe we'll do it that way. But we'll figure a way because I'll tell you the bottom line when, I get, when you really think about it, they screwed me, but you know, excuse my French lord, but you know, they dragged their feet on this freaking return label. It could have been had the return label already. They refused to send it to me. And then when I sent them the information, they want to basically use this 48, 48 hours to basically just drag their feet on the whole entire thing so keep in mind the way amazon has i guess it's a policy with them because i've never had this problem with amazon I was able to return a fourteen hundred dollar projector with no problem but i think it's the policy that they have with amazon that within 48 hours if uh they have 48 hours to actually reply so keep in mind 48 hours to reply as long as they reply with any kind of bogus email it'd be like i said it'd be coupons for Applebee. doesn't make a difference if it's a reply back, they consider that to be uh, canceled out as in uh, putting a complaint against them. So if they don't con contact you within 48 hours at all, period, then that means they forfeit and you may get your money back. You may, um, we may, may, we may credit you a, uh, your money. But other than that, you're at the mercy of Elite Screens because twice they have sent me the same freaking email. And basically when I want to call and complain about it, Amazon went in and sent a complaint. And because that complaint went through, they made me wait an additional 48 hours. So if you sit back and do nothing and just let them drag their feet forever, then you're basically, you're dogged out, all right? And if you call in a complaint and if Amazon files a ticket against them, then you have to wait an additional 48 hours for them to respond. If they respond within 48 hours, 
and it can be like I said, it can be anything in the email they can send to you, it's considered to be a reply back. So this could go on for a while. And this was going on for four days, and that's when I decided to go through PayPal. But I went through PayPal, and keep in mind, I'll give you some information here. If you pay through your PayPal business debit card or debit card, keep in mind that is not has nothing to do with PayPal. So they'll transfer you over to their, their um, credit card department. Over there, things are a little differently. So then you're getting your 10 to 30 days back, you will get uh, somewhere between uh, a month to 90 days, okay? Because it has to go through MasterCard and everybody has to review it and do so forth and so forth. By then, you pretty much probably already purchased the item twice or three or four times over. So that's the problem right there. And even though I have a tracking number showing that the item is delivered, the, uh, the, the shipper told me he left it at the front door, he left a detailed message. Um, um, Elite refuses to honor that and basically they just want to get send me, they want these, these, these code numbers on the bottom. That's what they want. See those code numbers? They want that. So I sent that in, sent all that information in for goodness sakes, and then they didn't reply back. So I sent it on Thursday. They never replied back after that. Any other day they were replying back, back to back to back to back to back with no problem. And because it was within the 48 hours, I go to contact Amazon. Amazon said, whoever told you that didn't tell you the truth. We don't do that. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm done. I'm going to go through PayPal. So I go through PayPal. I go through their business department. I go through their debit card department. And they tell me it could be a month to 90 days. Now, here's the kick. This is what you want to do. When I paid for the first projector, which was this right here, this Christie projector right here, I did an unboxing on it on Facebook. It was broken. I mean, literally broken. All these morning lights went off. Done. Four hundred and fifty bucks altogether for shipping. Five hundred and fourteen dollars. Now, because I paid through it for my debit card, I would have had to wait ninety days. But the woman at PayPal was such a sweetheart that she went in and she credited me the money to my account so I can go buy the projector again, which I have coming in on Wednesday. But this time, when I bought that projector. I paid for it through PayPal, through PayPal. You go over and you log into your PayPal account and pay for it. That's how you want to do it. Because when you do it that way, that means that you have the 10 to 30 days and it skips the whole bureau nonsense of going through the freaking credit card companies and all that stuff. So just keep in mind, just so you know that from the door. So I learned the hard way, but actually I was very blessed because that woman came in and credited that money back to my account. And that allowed me to basically take that money and add a little more to it and get the projector again from another merchant, which I pray that the projector does work when it gets here. And uh, if it doesn't, at least I went through PayPal to PayPal, which means in 10 to 30 days, I'll have the money back in my account. Now this projector right here is still basically being reviewed by PayPal, but they did give me the credit for the money. Till then, they're advising me not to ship out the projector to keep it here. So for the fellow who sold me the broken projector, this will be here for 90 days. You know what the crazy thing about it is? You see this lens sitting in this projector? $3,000 for that lens. Yep, that's a $3,000 lens for a projector that he sold for $400 and he sold for $469 or about $514. Didn't research his baby. That lens is worth three grand. So you gave me a broken projector, cheated me out of, uh, tried to cheat me out of $400 and something dollars to have me look at a, a lens that's worth three grand. Let me show you something here. They come out pretty easy too. I'm gonna show you. There's a release button right here on the top, so you can pull the lens out. So let me see if I can position myself here. All right? That easy. That's a three thousand dollar lens right there for Chrissy on a, on a high end projector. And these projectors are about a couple of thousand dollars, four or five thousand dollars. That lens is worth quite a bit. If I wanted to, I can sell that lens right now on eBay and get about maybe about $1,500 for it easily. But I'm not doing that because that is considered to be stealing. This is his merchandise. It belongs to him and it's going back to him. But I could do that. You know what I mean? If I wanted to be evil about it, I can basically sell it and say, hey, it came as is. But I don't do stuff like that because I believe in what comes around goes around. It comes around, it goes around. Trust me, I believe in karma on a, on a high level. So. I'm going to send him back his broken projector once the 90 days are up or whenever they decide and send everything back to him. And keep in mind, I am not paying for shipping on this. That's not going to happen. He's going to send me a shipping return label and I'm going to send it right back to him. So 
And I tell people at the end of the day, people understand, at the end of the day, I got to answer to God for everything I do. Whether you want to believe it or not, I have to answer to God. I can't sit there and ask him to bless my hand and make my business thrive and just that and the other, help me with my health and all that stuff if I'm going around cheating and stealing from people. I got to answer for that at the end of the day. So like I said, that's a $3,000 $3, lens sitting in that projector right now. I get a buyer on there for two grand, fifteen hundred dollars easily for that lens because everybody else is probably selling it for a little more than that for that particular projector. There are people right now that are selling this projector without the lens. If you see a projector and they're selling it to you just like this without the lens, because they sold the lens, that's why. The lens is worth a couple of grand, they're expensive. And they sell you the projector just like this without the lens. So somebody easy buy for me, no, they'll have to buy this, they'll get this projector for cheap, like 200 bucks, because it has no lens in it because probably the previous owner sold the lens. So they'll sell it to you just like this, and they'll say, look, it has no lens, um, it has a lamp, maybe it doesn't have a lamp with it. I can sit there and basically sell that right there, and I got a brand new 505 lamp sitting right over there, and say, hey, look, I'll give you a bundle. You can have both of these right here, give me about $2,200. Easy sale. Because they'll go buy this projector for 250, and get this and hook it up. And that projector right there on the market, they were for a couple of thousand dollars. Oh, what is that? Is that the cat back again? That is a cat back again. Yeah! I feed cats in my front yard. Yeah, that's really like to feed them. There's a couple that come here to eat every day. Oh, he's gone. Bye-bye. That's Domino. I have nicknames for him. Once I hope they get comfortable to me, I can bring them in and take care of them. And I can really spoil them. Because what I would do is I would take this room right here, all my stuff in this room, and just put it in the basement and turn this into a cat haven for them. Yep, that's what I would do. But they don't trust me yet, so I have to wait. But until then, because winter time's coming up, and I don't know where they're sleeping at, um, I'm going on Amazon, and I'm buying one of those cat houses that got the heating pad in it. I have an outlet right outside the house. I can plug it in. They can go in there and get warm for the winter. So I'll hook them up. But yeah, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. If you see a projector with that missing right here, they sold the lens. I guarantee they sold it. These right here are for maybe <laughs> they're cheap, $300. That $200 lens is right here. They go to this projector right here, the NEC 1150. They go to those. Yeah. These come out. You can interchange these lenses, but it's not that easy. You got to take apart the projector to get to them. You already got to rip apart that projector to get to it. But I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about turning it into a rear projection screen. Really, really thinking about it. Because it would be cool. 100 and 35 inch rear projection screen, but where would I put it? I mean, you gotta have some room to do rear projection. And I don't have the room for it. So where would I put it? It'd make a great a great ghost screen for Halloween. That's what it'd be kind of cool for. If I put it in my in my alleyway right here, and I put a projector behind it and can project ghosts off of it. See, that'd be cool. That'd be a good idea right there. But for Christmas or something like that, a giant massive projection screen to project images through. That'd be cool. All right, so we're just about, let me see where we get on out with this. All right, that's looking pretty good. All right, so that'll be dry by tomorrow. Whew, sorry about this. Blind of the daylight set up both of us. That'll be dry by tomorrow. I'll have that set up. I'll be in here tomorrow. This time won't be early in the crack of dawn because I usually do videos in the crack of dawn. I'll wait till around 12 o'clock when everybody's up and good because usually I'm up like 4 o'clock in the morning. Like I'll just shoot a video now and get it out of the way. But yeah, I'll do it, um, I'll do it around that time. So uh, everybody be good to go. All right? We're going to watch it together. Set it up for us all. I like the paint. I don't know why. I just like the pink. I checked all the colors and I like the pink. I'm not done yet, so I'm doing this right here, and then I'm gonna do under, under, under the, under here and here. I don't want too much in here. I'm gonna get a discotheque, and I'm gonna actually light that area right there, and then I'm gonna have the screen right here. Put a nice soft glow of pink and have the screen right here. Give a little bit of a Miami Vice kind of kick to it, like, and kind of cool. All right, people. Thank you all. For your time i really appreciate spending time with you all and um i'll be back on ooh, look at the snow i'll be back on later on tomorrow and we'll set up that kitchen screen get it up and going all right all right and by then uh the contact paper will be here i'm gonna be almost finished probably friday i'll be about halfway through the arcade screen 
and uh, we'll get ready to start coding the big screen. All right, thank you all for your time. You'll have a blessed day and be safe out there.